Hey everybody, Esther here, CEO and founder of Virtual Assistant Internship and the 90 Day VA program, which helps all of you turn your skills into a real online virtual assistant career in 90 days or less. And I am here with one of our students, Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Hi. And I want to really break down how she launched her virtual assistant career and all the kinds of stuff that she's doing online and really how she was able to land those jobs, what went into it and what, went, and what her life looks like, because you're going to find out that she's got a crazy life <laughs> and she's still able to make this work. And so how is she really doing that so that we can um, take some notes and learn from her too. So are you ready, Taylor? I am. Yes. Okay, so tell everybody a little bit about your background and what you were doing before you transitioned into the online work world. So really, I was just a stay-at-home mom. Um, I used to be a staff accountant, um, but after having my second baby, I decided that you know daycare is super expensive, so there was no way that I was going to be able to pay for that without, well, you know, with actually taking home money. Um, mm -hmm. and my husband had just joined the air force and so he, you know, was going to be leaving anyways and we were going to go with him. So there was no point in me going back to work. And so I was a stay at home mom for about a year, year and a half. And I came across Esther's website and thought, you know, I loved her personality. So I thought I'd try it out, um, and see if it could be something for me. And, once I started doing that, you know, I kind of was able to get to know like myself and the things I could learn. Mm. But before that, I was just a stay at home mom and just kind of hanging out with my kids. How, how many kids do you have and how old are they? I have two, um, one and three, both girls. Oh, so, okay. Well, so it was, was it after you had the first one or the second one that you were like, this isn't working? Um, after number two. Okay. I now you had two to pay for in daycare. Yes. So, Got it. yeah. And for those that don't have a spouse in the military or know someone in the military, can you explain a little bit about like what the life of a military spouse is like with trying to be in the career industry, trying to have their own career? <laughs> yeah. So that is one thing I was super worried about. I was thinking, you know, if I just try and become a staff accountant again, I'm going to be in the workforce again, but you know, what happens if my husband deploys? Like, I'm going to be the sole parent for both of my kids. What happens when they're sick? I have to not be able to go to work, you know? And also, we move. <laughs> I'm going to have so many different bullets on my resume that makes me look like a a person that's not a committed person. And I, and that's not me. Yeah. And also the startup time between getting into a new, it's called PCS. For those of you who aren't in the military, PCS means that you move about every two years. Sometimes you get lucky and it's like every four years um, to a different base. Um, and it's just based on like the staff personnel that they have to like try to maintain at all the different bases. And um, so when you go and move, like think about how long it takes to get a job. So like every two years, we're going to do another three to six months before we can get a new job again on top of having to move the entire family. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I hate interviewing. Like that is not like, of course. My who thing. likes it? <laughs> so <laughs> yes, that is definitely something I was not looking forward to doing. And you know, lo and behold, my husband's deployed. So, you know, that happened and I was, you know, Hey, that's what we signed up for, but we also needed to figure out how to make it work on top of that too. And that's yeah. when I came across. Okay. So. so yeah. So like, tell me about how it was before you first started hearing about online work and virtual assisting to, um, like applying for jobs and getting hired. Like what did that journey look like? So I had known about, virtual assistant and I started kind of looking into the MyCAA that's available to military spouses where you can get certified online to do medical billing. And I actually started that process and I was like, I don't know that this is for me because I was looking at all of the different positions available and just, it was very daunting. Um, I'm going to pop in there as well, because I don't know if you noticed this when I, when I was doing my CAA, it was all like you had to do this 
certification program that was not a small amount of work. And then all you did was get the certification in something that either was starting your own business or paid like $15 per hour. It made no, and it, or, and it was like location specific. I was like, why are we doing this for military spouses? This is stupid. Yeah, exactly. And I was looking at like, even after I finally got my certification to become a medical billing and coding, like the highest I could find was like $15 an hour. Exactly. So I was like, okay. I mean, that's great starting out, but like what happens when I want to, you know, move up and I get better? Like there was no like necessary like track of getting promoted or anything like that. So, um, I started kind of like looking and just kind of like typing in like virtual jobs, remote jobs and kind of came up with some stuff and I came across Upwork a little bit and I've heard not so good things about that. So, I kind of would keep looking and, you know, how the internet knows what you're looking for yeah. and kind of came up on my Facebook year thing. And so I started looking at that too. Um, talked with my husband about it and I was like, this would be, I think, I think I could be really good at this. And I think I would actually like it because I can interact with people doing stuff that I like to do. So yeah, that's kind of where. Okay, so you enrolled in 90 Day VA, and then how quickly between when you enrolled to like, how, were you able to go through the coursework a little bit during the week or whatever? And then what, how did you get these like first clients? Like, how did you get them? And how long did it take you? Okay, yeah. So I, I enrolled the middle of May. And I started doing like, I was super excited. So I started watching it like my husband thought I was sleeping in, but I was actually watching some courses online. And then I would stay up late and watch some courses. And I got myself to about 60 to 70% done. And I was like, you know, I feel like I have something under my belt. So I just started applying so I could get used to the application process mm -hmm. and um, came across the challenge that um, Esther's group put together. And so I was like, okay. It's an application so challenge. Said, yes, the application challenge. It was very challenging, <laughs> but I, I ended up sending out at least like 10 emails or um, applications a day. And that's when I actually, I came across the, my first client, which I didn't do it the normal way. So like I didn't send them an email. I just went into their contact us area on their blog and I, you know, put in the same stuff I was putting in my email mm -hmm. and she actually within the same day. Uh, email me back and she's like, okay, so I really need to know what do you do and how can you help me? And I was super excited because it was a blog that I frequent often because it's recipes and I used to be in culinary. So it's super in, up my alley. And so that was not, even, that was about a month to the day from when okay, I started so for like almost exactly a month into the program. Okay. Yeah. And, um, what, so it's a, it's a food blog. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So what kinds of stuff do you do for her? I'm actually her ghost writer. So there's, um, six people that write on there. Um, and so I do all of her posting. So she sends me the pictures of the food and the directions and ingredients. And then I take it from there. So I just make it come to life for her and her voice and send it to her. And then she uploads it to her blog. Awesome. And is that the only client that you have, or do you have some more ones now? I actually have three clients now. Busy. I know. And I've only been doing this for what, like three months. Yeah. Months. What kinds of businesses are they and what kinds of stuff do you do for them? So I have the food blog, um, and then I have um, a grief counselor in New York, oh. and I, she, you know, she's a little bit, um, I would say technologically challenged, so she's not 100% how to do everything. So all she does is she, she types out her blog, sends it to me, I upload it into her website and format it the way that it, you know, looks appealing and everything, and then I you know, send it to her, publish it, and then I upload that onto her Facebook. And it's just that simple. But it's something that she doesn't know how to do and I can help her with. And she doesn't have time to do. Absolutely. So. And I would imagine there's even more stuff you could do for her as time goes on if she's not super tech savvy. Yeah, I've actually, um, I've created, um, I do some of her email 
um, subscription management and I created an embedded form into her website and put it there for her. And now she actually asked me, um, she has a business coach that she works with and she asked me to do a zoom with her. So that way her business coach can work with me on doing a couple more things. So, and wants to possibly refer some of her, the business coaches clients to me. So absolutely. Yeah. Like I always tell all the girls that once one client and like that clients, that business owners network hear about you and that you're doing a good job spreads like wildfire because everybody needs good help. And a lot of times all the business owners need help and they don't even realize that a virtual assistant can do this stuff for me. And if they have realized that, then it's really hard to find a good one because there's a lot of bad online workers out there. <laughs> so I think you're going to find that it's going to spread like wildfire and you're going to be overbooked like I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's just one, that's my second client. Um, so I did have a third client. Um, and I kind of, we've determined that I wasn't a good fit for them. They weren't really a good fit for me. And luckily with the con, um, the contract that I had built, you know, we were able to part amicably and I actually landed a client that same day, another client. So they kind of offset and why wasn't that one a good fit? Um, she, what it was, a, she was a startup. And so she was not used to delegating and mm. didn't know exactly what she wanted to delegate. And so she kept changing it and it was very hard to know what she wanted and she didn't even know yeah. what she wanted. And just kind so, of setting you up for failure. Cause like then at the end of the month, you don't have anything that you did, but it's not your fault. <laughs> right. So, you know, I was as much as I want to, like, I tried my best to make it work with her, but at the same time, if it wasn't working for both of us, it wasn't a win-win situation. Yeah. So, so what did you build in your contract so that you could, you know, adjust that? And for those of those watching that are like contract, I don't get that. Can you explain a little bit about that and like what the pros are of being a contractor? Yeah. Um, so the, um, the course actually provides us with a contract that we can manipulate and put our name in and, you know, determine whatever type of services we're going to be offering. And within that, I put a 30 day notice. So like if it's not working for me, she gives me 30 days. If it's not working, you know, for her, she gives me 30 days, everything like that. And it allows us to kind of give time to find someone to cover or find um, a time to replace that client. If you, especially if you already are overbooked, you can be like, Hey, I have something, you know, opening mm -hmm. up in my schedule. Mm -hmm. So that was something that I was looking at. And I think, you know, both her and I were on the same page. And so since we had the contract, I was, I was not, um, Worry. it was nothing. It was, we parted amicably because yeah. of that. Yeah. That's good because yeah. you don't want to have bad, like people out there that are, or don't work with her or I don't, I wouldn't refer anybody to her or anything like that. Like it's just, Hey, it just wasn't a good fit. And I, that's such a big difference between being an employee, right? Yes. Yes. It's just so nice to be able to choose who I work with. Mm -hmm. um, and then who was the new one that you replaced her with? I love when this happens. I love when you release something that's not working for you and how God or the universe, whatever you believe in just comes in and is like, Oh, finally you released it. Here's the, here's the thing I really wanted to give you. Yeah, I had actually been praying about it. I was like, okay, God, you got to put like someone in here to fit. You deliver. Even if it's not the full thing, like I need something to show that this is, I'm making the right move. Mm -hmm. And the same day I landed a client, she does branding and um, website development. So um, she was switching over her client, her CRM to Dubsado or however you say it. I don't mm -hmm. know. That's right. Dubsado. Yeah. And, um, so she wanted to build out the forms that she had in her previous or that she had bought previously from someone and she needed someone to do it cause she's, you know, overbooked it herself. And so I started doing all of her forms for her and then I'm going to start doing all of her social media posting as well. Wow. Yeah. And are these all, they're not project based, right? These are all like long-term people that pay you every single month and they have to give you a month's notice if they want to end your working relationship. Is that right? Correct. Yep. And I bill every one of them at the beginning of the month. So they pay me in full up front. And then um, that way I'm not out any money. Because, um, you know, there's some people, I mean, we're working online, but it's a two way street. Like you build a relationship both ways. And so mm -hmm. 
as long as you're providing quality work, they don't mind paying up front. That's so. great advice. Yeah. And as long as you have like some examples and references to show for yourself that you're like, look, I've done a good job and you can trust me, then they're happy to do that. Yeah. And I've actually gotten a lot of compliments on my application kit that I've put together um, with my resume, like my skills that I have, the um, portfolio pieces and, um, you know, like the three or four testimonials that I have on there. And so like it gives them everything in one look. The application kit is something that's proprietary to our program and it's, we give you a template and examples and it's just what she just said. And I love to hear that you get compliments on it because that is what I hear from business owners that hire our VAs too. Anything that you can do that's going to make it so you have less back and forth with them and so they can just look at you and see at a glance if they're a good fit to want to interview or not. Boom, right there in one thing. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Yes, I'm glad so it's working. Um, okay. So how many hours per week did you want to be working and how many hours per week are you at now? So I wanted to be between 10 and 15 hours a week. And right now I'm around seven or eight. So I still have room to grow, which is nice. But at the same time, I'm still comfortable where I'm at. Mm. So, but I was working, I would say around 10 to 12 when I was first starting out, but now I'm getting faster, which is why I've loved being able to do package pricing versus hourly pricing. So tell us more about that. I thought you were hourly because I just assumed that, but you're still meeting your income goals, but you're not having to work 10 to 15 hours a week. I know. Oh. Yeah. Explain that. Yeah. I, I, um, every, you know, people ask you what your rate is and I, I never like to give it up front. I say, you know, I kind of am in this range, but I like to work with each individual client because everyone has different um, things that they need. So there's no way that I can, you know, be like, hey, this is what I'm going to charge you. Good girl. So I, you know, get on a phone call with them, ask them what they're looking for. And then I say that I can build like a custom package pricing for them. And then that's what will be like for the month. Yeah. So it's not telling them how many hours that I'm working, um, but it's telling them what they're going to get at the end of the month. So in terms of like deliverables, like you're going to have this many right. posts, you're going to have this blog up or whatever. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It helps them budget for the month. So they know how much they're going to be paying at, at the end of the month or at the beginning yeah. of the month, really. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then when you're able to work faster because you're not charging hourly, you're not screwing yourself. Now you're making the same amount of money, but you're not having to work as much. Right. Yep. So you where know, did you learn all of this fantastic information, Taylor? You know, <laughs> I might, you know, be able to point you in the direction. It's, it's a virtual internship. So if you want to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to do it my own horn, but this is all stuff that like you only really learn if somebody who's been doing it can share it with you. Otherwise you get to learn the hard way, right? Trying to bill at the end of the month for the hours and not getting paid for two to four weeks thereafter. So now you just work for free for like two months. Like that's all normal stuff or getting faster at it and still only making 10 to 15 per hour. And now they just keep giving you more work and now you're just never going to make more money. So these are all problems that I think a lot of people face and that's why people join a programming community and have mentors and stuff because you just started and you're already doing all of that. A lot of people don't ever figure out to do that until year two to four. And they're like, this VA thing isn't working for me. It's like, well, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I mean, because I've come from corporate America, like where you're used to working for the hours, you know, yeah, like, like a dog. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's so hard. Yes, of course, it's a different mindset shift, right? It's like the value and the pieces that, that I'm bringing to somebody versus the hours that I work. The hours don't really matter anymore, do they? Right. Yeah. That's a good way to so. look at it. Um, so tell me about a typical day for you because you're a mom, got your kids at home. How, does you, how do you do the work schedule with the kids and stuff? Um, so most of the time I, I save my work for the evening because I'm more of a night owl. Um, and by then I've at least got like an email or two from a client that I can follow up on or, you know, I have my blog I can post and work on. Mm -hmm. And so, but most of the time I go in the morning, bring my kid to school. Um, I have my other ones still. Sometimes I'll work on stuff in the afternoon. Um, or, you know, if I have a call scheduled, I'll just let them know and be like, Hey, mommy's got a call. We got to you got to be quiet or I'll go in another room. Yeah. You get like extra TV time or something for this time. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and then, you know, they've been pretty good for the most part. And even if they're not like, I'm fairly upfront like that, I'm a mom. And so most of my clients aren't turned off if they, you know, come up and ask me a question or something. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, yeah, I just put them to sleep. I try by seven o'clock most nights, but I don't win all the time. (laughs) And then, um, yeah, then I just hop on and get my work done and call it a night and I can do it in my jammies. So, (laughs) and your clients, like they don't have, you need to be online between nine to five and you need to have this to me by 3 PM, like a typical remote employee or an employee type of job. It's not like that. No, not at all. Um, most of mine are very flexible. Um, they're like, Hey, I even, I'm like, can you give me the stuff at the beginning of the month and I'll work on it at my own pace and I'll send it to you when it's ready. Mm-hmm. And all of them, you know, they love that. Cause then it's they They send it to me once and they're done, you know, right. and they know that it's going to get done. And I mean, I even asked, I was like, Hey, we've been working together for two months. Do you have any feedback? She's like, no, I've been loving everything that you're doing. Oh, you know, that makes me so happy. So yeah, as long as so, I'm getting my work done, we're good. Yeah. So online business owners or just business owners in general that are hiring a virtual assistant, they don't care if you have kids. They don't care if you do it on your own schedule. Um, they don't, they know that you're a mom during the day. So if they need to take a meeting during the day and your kid interrupts you, they're like, okay, well, yeah, but it's a meeting during the day. So I know that that's part of the deal, right? Have you found right. that? That's what was my experience. Yeah. Even one of mine is she was like emailing me back and forth. She's like, okay, go play with the kids, you know, like, <laughs> so Yeah, they're super, you know, flexible. And, you know, when you find someone that you gel well with, like, they're not going to care. As long as you're doing, you know, what you've promised and you're Mm. doing it well, they're, you know, they won't. Do you feel like it's a lot of calls during the week or just like a couple times a month, maybe? Only a couple times a month, um, unless I'm starting with a brand new client. I feel like that's when it might be a little, like maybe once a week or something. But other than that, um, I give my clients the option to do a call after so many weeks to, you know, kind of go over things and make sure that we're both on the same track. Other than that, like we just mostly do email back and forth and use Google drive a lot. Okay. Nice. Good. And, um, if you feel comfortable talking about it, what was your personal overall income goals and have you met them? Have you exceeded them? Like, where are you at in relation to that? You can use general numbers if you feel comfortable, but we're, we're trying yeah. to be open here, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, so my goal is to be anywhere between seven to a thousand dollars, or seven hundred to a thousand dollars, like t- take home around there. And since I'm only working about ten hours a week, like that's like that's my goal. Um, I'm I'm over halfway there. So. And I've just started out. So that's before I even like get to the type of pricing I want to get to once I have the experience. So that is, I mean, I don't know if anyone knows about the military, but that's about half of what my husband makes full time. So that's pretty dang good for only working 10 hours a week. Yeah. So that makes me so happy. I, because I've, I've been outside of America for a while and my business has like, different income. It's just a totally different world than when I was a virtual assistant. I forget about what's normal to make in the different areas of America and in different areas of the world. We all are in like our own little bubbles, you know what I mean? And so yeah. that's why I ask because really it's all about what success looks like to you. And so some people come in like, well, I need a full-time job. And I'm like, but do you really, or do you just need to make like $2,000 a month? What if you could make $2,000 a month but working less, like what you figured out how to do. So, and do you really need to make that much money? Because if you don't have to commute and you don't have to pay for childcare, like all these things, you don't really need full time 40 K a year anymore. Do you? (laughs) Right. Exactly. And you know, it's, and the other part is like, I'm building something for me and I've been growing as, you know, as a person. I was going to ask about that that next. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I never knew I would be good at ghostwriting or, you know, some of the technological website stuff. I'm, I would have never thought, but, you know, with the information that was provided to me through the course, they, you know, I was able to expound off of that and really actually turn it into something. Is it nice having your own thing that's separate from being a military spouse and a mom? Uh, yeah. And, and, 
it is nice because, you know, they're like, Hey, what do you do? I'm like, well, I work from home. And they're like, Oh, really? Like, do, do you do childcare? Like, what do you do? Because like, that's a lot of what like military spouses do. Like they watch people's kids and mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I mean, I have my own kids, but other than that, I don't know that I can handle anyone else's kids. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I just mean like more personally for you, like, because I found that I didn't have, if I didn't have my own thing as a military spouse, it was like, I just didn't have like this purpose. Like I'm more than just like a mom and a military spouse. Like I'm a smart person. Yeah. And I, I was struggling with that. And I had actually, you know, before I even enrolled in the course, I had the option, um, to have a staff accountant job for making 60,000 a year. And I, you know, I had anxiety like taking that because I've been with my kids for a while, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I still wanted to keep developing me as a person mm -hmm. and not, you know, you know, stay at home 18 years, my children go off to school and now what do I do? Yeah. And that, that was not appealing to me. And I'm, I'm a hard worker. I have my bachelor's in accounting and staying at home is nice and it's always something I've wanted to do, but I wanted, I still want to be me at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Um, and I think that sometimes it's sexy to talk about like what you can do online and how much money you can make and da, 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 da. But I don't want to forget that it's not all about that. It's also about like me as a person having more to give to this world and more that I enjoy and things to do than running errands and changing diapers and like watching Peppa Pig for the third time in a row. <laughs> like that's okay that we don't only want to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. Good for you. Yeah. It's, it's definitely nice, you know, and go ahead. I was like, it's definitely nice. Like I like being able to like develop myself and challenge myself. So I've been able to do that with this and come out of my comfort zone. Like I wouldn't normally pitch to people that have, you know, over a hundred thousand followers, like who am I to pitch to them? But yeah. like I have more confidence in that. Why do you think that that, how'd you get that confidence? Like, how did you get to that switch? I mean, it basically came from the fact that what, what's the worst they can say is no, right? Mm -hmm. Like, but I, not, I, didn't have, I didn't have them as a client to begin with. So if they tell me no, it's not like I'm out anything. Yeah. So there's, I mean, it's two, it's two letters. It's not defining me as a person. Mm, I love that. Separating the no, like either the no response or the no to like you as a job versus you as this like human Right. Yeah. Mm, I like that. It's a mindset change too. Good. And I think probably the more like that you've worked with one client and you have this application kit and maybe you get a compliment on it, it starts to like feel like, okay, okay, I could like do the next thing. Right. Like it's like baby steps. Right. Yeah. And I mean, like as I'm building up like these relationships, like I have more testimonials coming in that I can add that I have no room for on my application kit. Wow. And so it's nice to, you know, have those but able to be confident in what I am sending as a pitch and yeah. based on the work that I've already done and, you know, what I'm wanting to do and kind of putting my sights out there. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. I love that. Okay. So last one is what is the biggest tip that you would give to someone that's starting out on their virtual assistant journey or might've hit some roadblocks in the beginning stages? Um, I would say keep applying to jobs, even if you're not hearing back, because there's some things that resonate with others and kind of like do what you can to stand out. So like put, don't just put virtual assistant in the, in your email, like tagline, like be like the virtual assistant you need that you didn't know you needed, you know, like something to make yourself stand out to where they want to click your email. Hmm. Um, because otherwise you're just another person that's sending them the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and it helps you stand out and, you know, being more personal, not just sending a blank paragraph about, Hey, I saw your post. And then, you know, show that you've actually looked at their website. Um, you took an interest in them and, you know, they, obviously that means that you're willing to work hard at what you're doing, even if you're putting the time in before they even hire you. 
Mm, and I'm going to tail off on that with a bonus question. That is so different from how we're taught to apply for remote jobs, right? We're given these templates and we're taught to be very, very formal. So what are some of the things that you've like changed since now that you've been in this world for a little while? And I know you've learned some stuff from us because we have to tell you guys this, like, it's not the same in this world. You got to do different stuff. Like, what are some of the specific things that you're doing differently? Like the changing of the subject line, a more personal paragraph, anything else that you can like, that it's a, it might be a mindset shift too. Like what are the different things that you've had to change since you've switched over into like the virtual world? Um, like it's simple, but like color, like I'm not used to using color. Like I'm used to the black and white, like yes. here's my resume, you know, and I found that I really love using color. And so when I'm doing um, the blog posting and stuff for my client, I'm, you know, making sure I'm making it look appealing and, before, like, I wouldn't have even thought that's a thing. Like, mm -hmm. um, and so I do that in some of my emails, depending on the type of client it is to make myself stand out a little bit. And that, you know, I feel like just like knowing me as a person and being comfortable, um, with who I am and what I know, like that, like you said, a mindset change has been very helpful mm -hmm. in doing and kind of like helping setting myself apart because, I'm not looking to be exactly what they want, but better than what they want. Oh, I love that. So I'm not even looking to meet even 75% of your requirements. I'm looking to like kill it at even half of what you listed, but even better than what you have listed and even more stuff that you don't even think of that you put, that you could have put on that list that I could do. Right. Oh, I like that. I've never heard that. That's a good one. Well, Taylor, thank you so, so much for all of your wisdom about trying to deal with the mom and the military spouse life and balancing an online um, career and some of the stuff that you do to stand out in a totally virtual world. Um, really, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me.